chunks of hair would fall out. I thought I could just stop using it and not have to go through any of that. I'm just going to get this over and done with. Feel the way she has double symptoms immediately. Just like swell up, and they are painful. Oh, let's talk about why I decided to stop using moisturizers. So I was using moisturizers in the first two months while I was tapering off the steroids. So I was still using steroids, but using them less often, like I spoke about in the beginning of this video. Um, so I was using moisturizers while I was tapering off the steroids, but on the day I completely stopped using them, the 22nd of March. During the day, I had this massive itch attack on my arm and it was so intensely itchy that I was gonna, like I felt like I was going crazy because I was trying so hard not to scratch them because I knew that my skin was so fragile and that if I scratched them, they would just be so like, you know, just, uh, just the thought of it makes me sick but I didn't want to damage them, might damage my skin because they were healing. And I remember putting an ice pack on it and just like trying so hard not to scratch. And my arm was turning purple from all the ice pack that I was pressing on. And I just could not bear the itch. And I put some moisturizer on to try and help the itch. But as soon as I put it on, it made it like 10 times worse and it got so much more itchy so i quickly hopped in a shower cold shower i washed everything off i washed the moisturizer off and then after coming out of the shower i decided not to moisturize because my skin was calmed after the cold shower and i knew that if i were to put the moisturizer back on it would become hot again and trigger the itch again so that was the moment I decided to stop using moisturizers all out. And I remember my itchiness went down by like 60% like overall. So I think I really needed to take out the moisture um, in that phase of TSW. And yeah, so that brings me on to phases of TSW. People have different phases and for me at the time um, when I stopped using moisturizers I was in a phase where my body wouldn't accept moisturizers and moisture in general and that worked really well for me but as I started to heal I think my body was ready to um, take in the moisture back in again and I didn't know when to reintroduce it because I've heard of so many people going through like flares because they reintroduced moisturizers too soon and I didn't want to make the same mistake so I was being really like cautious and would only put a little bit of moisturizer on my hands to see how my skin reacted um so I wasn't using moisturizers for a long time and I reintroduced it only a month ago um, when I got admitted to the hospital. So during TSW, I didn't want to see the doctor because I've just heard too many stories of people getting dismissed and getting told that TSW isn't a thing when there's so much evidence for TSW and getting told that it's just severe eczema which it is not it's so different to eczema like with eczema you don't experience hair loss you don't experience lack of temperature regulation it's just such a completely different thing and I didn't want to get told that and be prescribed with more steroids so I didn't want to see the doctor but around so like a month ago I was in a flare up and I was feeling really like down because after a whole year I was still not healed as I wished I was and I was like losing hope 
and I was talking to my parents about it and my dad mentioned that I should be open to like medications that aren't steroids I used to think it's either zero or a hundred and I I'm a perfectionist so I tend to do that a lot of the times but he told me that I need to remember that you could do things 50%, 60%, 70%, it doesn't have to be zero or a hundred and I thought you know maybe he's right and he also mentioned just like people need water to survive some people need medication to survive and that's okay and when I heard that I was like you know what he may be right <laughs> and um I, that's how i became open to dupixent and cyclosporin um and i did um, a lot of research and i used to be like i used to fear medication all medications because of tsw but i learned that you need to look at each medication differently because they're all so different and use them safely and appropriately so that you won't go through a withdrawal. So that's how I got open to using Dupixent. And from there, I decided to go to the dermatology to get Dupixent. And because I was looking so crusty and so oozy, um, the dermatologist was really worried about me and she told me that I have an, I had an infection which I didn't know because the, the plasma ooze and the infection ooze is really similar and I thought it was just plasma but she did a little swab and it came out as um, I think it was a staph infection and she also wanted me to do wet wraps because my skin was really really dry and I was really like hesitant to do the wet wraps because I had been doing the moisture withdrawal for nearly a year. And like I said, I was really scared to go into a flare up once I reintroduced moisturizers. So I was really scared and I didn't want to do it. So I didn't do it at home. And then when I visited her for the second time, she could tell that I didn't do the wet wraps. And she was also really concerned about my um, infection. And she said that like if this infection keeps going, then it could end up in your blood and cause more serious problems and it could be a life or death situation. And then so she sent me to the hospital and that's how I got admitted to the hospital. And there they did wet wraps for me and they they gave me the option to either do it with the steroids or without the steroids because people do wet wraps with steroids steroid cream usually and i um she, well, they asked me this because i told the dermatologist that i strictly didn't want any steroids at the hospital and she wrote that on the letter um the admission letter and so that's why, so they read that at the hospital. So that's why they asked me if I, the options. And I said without the steroids and they actually had to order a cream, um, which turned out to be Epiderm cream, um, the cream without the steroids because they didn't have that at the hospital because they always do it with the steroid creams. So how crazy is that? Um, so they ordered that for me and I ended up doing um, the wet wraps with the epiderm ointment and that's when I reintroduced moisturizers for the first time in a year um, and my skin reacted really well to it like it didn't flare up at all so I felt really relieved because it's not like I didn't want to moisturize myself I was just scared that my body would like flare up that's that's the whole reason why I didn't want to um, so I was really glad that my skin tolerated moisture again and the first day or well, the second day of being at the hospital I started taking cyclosporin and the doctor said that I can go on Dupixent as well but that needed um, that took a bit of time to like process it a little bit so um, so they gave me cyclosporin 
while they were doing the forms um, for Dupixent. And yeah, with showering, I used to take baths because they were a lot easier for me to take than showers. Like I had a really like traumatic experience with showers at the start of TSW because like the shower felt like burning acid on my skin. It stung so bad that I was traumatized from taking showers. So I would take baths instead of the showers. And at the hospital, I took a proper shower in the first time in months and months. So I was really scared and it did hurt so freaking bad. And because I had like so many little like cuts and wounds and from the scratching um, and it hurt so bad that I felt like I was going to faint. So I was like holding on to the pole and then a few days into cyclosporine and moisturizing my skin started to heal and gradually I had a pain free shower. The first pain free shower I had in like a year. I bawled my eyes out because I was so happy. I was happy crying, happy, ugly crying in the shower because I was so happy that I could shower normally without pain again. I, I will remember that moment for the rest of my life. But yeah, that was my experience at the hospital. Everyone at the hospital was really nice. Um, I ended up staying for four, four nights and yeah, cyclosporin worked really well for me and I healed so much in those four days and I took antibiotics to heal my infection as well. And yeah, after coming out of the hospital, I've been doing so great and um, cyclosporin cleared out a lot of my areas but the only area that didn't clear up for me was my neck and my chest and it was still really weepy and and my face was still a bit red too but um i started dupixent about like five days ago i had my loading dose at the dermatology um, the Dupixent, the first time you get it, you get two shots and I got it on my stomach. Um, but since getting Dupixent, my skin improved so much. And like I said before, I went down um, the dosage on cyclosporin. So Dupixent's been working really great for me. My neck and my chest has healed, is healing really nicely. It's still not 100% healed, but yeah, um, I'm really really happy but yeah let's go back to the questions i ran a bit off track there about the injection so um so like i said you get two shots of dupixent on your first day and i get the injection every fortnight i still haven't done my second one yet i do that in like five days um wait is that right I got Dupixent, oh, sorry, it wasn't five days ago. I got it nine days ago. So I got my first Dupixent shots nine days ago and I'm having my second one in five days. So um, from the second one, you just do one shot. And in Australia, we don't have the pens. There's two types of Dupixent injections. You get either the pen type, which is like an EpiPen, where you just like go stab and then it clicks and then it um, automatically puts the liquid in for you or you get the syringe where you put the needle in and you like press it, press the liquid in. And in Australia, we don't have the pen, so we get the syringe. And when I first found that out, I was really scared because of the needle and the fact that I had to push it in myself. But people told me that it's so much like less painful that way than the pen because the you can't control how fast the liquid goes in and i got the loading dose with the syringes and they didn't hurt too much it did hurt a little bit but um let's talk about that 
the very first injection, the nurse did it for me and the needle going in didn't hurt at all. It was more so the liquid going in that hurt for me. And the second one I did, I got really scared and I was holding the syringe um, against my stomach, nearly against my stomach, like I was like that much away. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do it, I can't do it. I got so scared. And then the nurse put her hand on the syringe with me, like on my hand, and then she pressed it in with me and oh my god it hurt so much when i did it i think it was the angle i put the needle in because you know how this how the needle has like an angle and when you slide it in like with the like right angle it goes in smoothly and it won't hurt but i didn't really like look at the angle properly and i ended up like pressing it in and it hurt so much um and then after that i put the liquid in and i timed it with like my breath like so i breathed in deeply and as I breathed out I pressed the liquid in and that way it didn't hurt um, but it was the needle that hurt so much so I'm really scared um, in five days when I have to do it myself but my boyfriend got told how to do it um, on the thigh but I don't think I can do it on the thigh because it's so like firm and I know it's gonna hurt so bad so even if he ends up doing it I think I'll ask him to do it on the stomach but I'll try and do it myself first um yeah let's move on to the next question how do I know if I'm in the oozy phase um your skin oozes so much that you won't not know that you're in the oozy phase so if you are questioning it, I don't think you are because it's it gets so easy. Um, so yeah, and TSW phases. So there are three TSW um, cycles. Number one is the flaring stage where your skin's flaring up. After that, you go into the flaky stage, which is the healing stage because it looks worse than the flaring stage sometimes because it's like covered in flakes and you look crusty, but it mean it's like a scab when you scrape your knee. It's healing your skin um, by covering up it with the flakes. And then the third stage is the clear skin phase when the when the skin falls off by itself make sure you don't pick at it because when you pick at it the skin underneath is so fragile it's still baby skin so you want to keep the flake on as long as possible and just let it fall off on its own because let's be honest we've all done it before but when you pick at it and you expose the baby skin and you like accidentally touch it or like scrape scratch it a little bit the skin breaks again and you have to go through the stages from the start so you don't want to do that it's just going to make your healing a lot longer so you don't want to pick at it and with tsw you get you get so many of these phases so it's like this is one set and you get a lot of it and as you go as you progress through TSW, the time between these phases gets longer and longer. So, and at the end, they are so much further away that you um, are in the clear skin phase for a long time. And yeah, so that's how you heal from TSW because you know how TSW feels like a roller coaster because even if you feel like you healed really nicely you get into a flare-up again and you feel like you've gone back so many steps but but when you think about it it's just your skin going through another phase and that phase gets easier as you go you'll see that even though it feels like you're getting dragged back again remember that you are still healing um so diet changes i've been gluten dairy and refined sugar free for over a year now and i've decided to do that because i wanted to support my guts because they are all inflammatory foods and by avoiding those things 
you are supporting your guts and you want to be supporting it during a hard time like TSW because I wanted to heal quickly um, I just thought if I continue eating inflammatory food my healing is going to take longer and longer so that's why I decided to change my diet how did you not lose hope and go back and not go back to steroids I'm three months TSW and it's hard I admire you it's really hard I feel you so much it's so hard and for me I tried to not lose hope by imagining myself with clear skin glowing skin and just like thinking about the things I'm going to do once I heal and the things I'm gonna wear and the thing and the makeup I'm gonna wear like just like those are the ha um, those were the happy thoughts for me and they just like instantly would make me smile and I also made vision boards on Pinterest and I also made it into like a printed version so that I could see it on my wall but and I would journal a lot about those days and yeah I would pretty much just imagine my days after I heal and so the past month I've literally I've got my life back for the first time in a year and this was the life that I was imagining my whole of TSW and it feels surreal that I'm finally here and that I still can't believe that I'm living the life that I used to think of every day and thanks to TSW I really really became grateful for the little things and for life like i used to take this for granted and that makes me feel grateful for going through tsw i know it sounds crazy that i'm saying this but i'm glad that i went through tsw because i wouldn't be close to who i am today if it wasn't for that and i and thanks to tsw I have all of you guys and I have a YouTube channel, I have um, TikTok, Instagram with followings, like it, I, I'm so grateful for all of that and I wouldn't have any of that if it wasn't for TSW, so I don't regret going through it. <clears throat> Did your eczema ever smell? This is an interesting question because yes. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say eczema, but TSW has a certain smell, um, especially at the beginning. It smells like a metallic smell. Um, it's a weird smell and you wouldn't know unless you go through it, but it's a really weird smell. And I had that smell for like a few months until it started to gradually fade away. Um, but yeah, it goes away. So don't worry too much about it what brought you the most comfort during this journey so again it was imagining myself picturing myself i almost like pretended that i had clear skin like in my head that got me through the hardest times i feel like i was like really manifesting those days and it's here now are you feeling your skin tight after Dupique scent? My skin is shedding like crazy after Dupique scent. Oh, my skin is tighter after being on Dupique scent. Like, I think my skin elasticity has come back. With cyclosporin, I didn't really notice um, my skin elasticity coming back. But as soon as I got on Dupique scent, I can really like feel it and see it. Can you talk about some of the side effects of deep scent that you've experienced? I haven't experienced any side effect um, so far. Hopefully I won't have to, but I know that some people have like eye infections and um, I've also heard of like weight gains um, as a side effect of deep scent. Hopefully I won't have to go through it. Was it harder to get intimate with your partner with TSW? Yes. Um, Anything touching my skin, like I said, felt like it was burning acid. And like my clothing and even the wind was so painful, let alone hugging with my partner, like was just not 
something that I could do and it was really hard because I needed the comfort, physical comfort, but I just couldn't do it. And I remember, yeah, I remember the days where I really needed a hug, but I just could not because it felt so painful. So he would just like comfort me with words. But yeah, being intimate with your partner during TSW isn't a thing, like you just can't. It must be really hard for the partner as well. Like I've seen people caring for people going through TSW on like social media, but it must be really hard for them as well because for us, like it's a mental game as well. And being the carer for people going through such a severe condition must be really hard emotionally as well. So I'm really grateful that I had my partner and he was really strong during this hard time. Like he didn't say any negative thing towards me. It was always positive and that was really big for me. How do you prepare for traveling with TSW? So I went to Japan during TSW and I don't really recommend it because going on the airplane was a nightmare. The air was really dry, so it made my skin flare up. And also like at the airport, the security steps were a nightmare because my skin was really affected and the machine didn't recognize my face. And it was like beeping and it was like, I had to be taken to the, the counter so that the person could um like identify me instead of the machine and it was just like so embarrassing so i don't recommend going i don't recommend the airport but my actual trip was really nice and my tips would be you know you have like your essentials like for me it was the bandages the um cotton gauze for wiping my oozes and like gloves and stuff like that without them i couldn't survive so just make sure you have all of those essentials with you and you take them with you wherever you go um and yeah and having like a face mask on really helped during my time at the airport and in japan um, cause in Japan, everyone still wears a mask, a face mask for COVID. And, um, that's why I was able to go to a lot of places like, um, in Japan because my face was pretty much covered up and I will have a hat on. So yeah, that may be something you want to do. So yeah, hopefully I covered everything, but if not, please leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer it all. So yeah, that was my one year reflection slash question Q&A session. Um, I hope you guys liked that and I hope that was helpful. Make sure you subscribe and so you won't miss out on my next video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.